Today's video, it's a bit of a May 2019 update. I'm gonna take you around the layout and show you the bits and pieces that I've been working on. First up for the layout update, I thought I'd just show you the top of the helix. Now with the top layer here, I had one of those moments going, oh bugger, what am I going to do? Because normally when I'm laying my track work, I will connect those power wires to the bottom of the track, drill through the baseboard and then connect underneath. The moment that I had was, hang on, this is the helix. I can't have wires hanging out below because I've got trains running close and you don't want to get those tangled. So what I decided to do here is basically as I was laying the track and I started laying the outside track first and then the inside and obviously I'd already laid a cork underneath. So what I'd done is actually cut these trenches where I was going to connect underneath of my track. I cut these trenches through the cork on both sides to feed these wires through. Now once I come back and start doing scenery, the wires across the track, they're gonna be covered, you're not gonna see that. And now if I do happen to see some wires through the scenery, I'm gonna actually paint these out and make them look like it's part of infrastructure along the track. Now first off, I had to extend the baseboard of my framework of the layout. And you can see here, it starts at this end here and it goes all the way. And I've sort of extended it out by about 30 centimeters, especially around this middle part here from the original layout framework. I put the beams across, cut them to size, put the board on. I had to then mark out the curve that I wanted. I've still got to take off a little bit here so I get a nice curve. I think what I'm going to do at the end here is basically I'm going to bring let that curve come in a bit more and then meet up better over here. So when I put the fascia on, it's gonna have a better flow coming around those edges. As you can see here, it sort of comes up approaching the viaduct. There are a couple of 48 classes there, just to sort of show you the size of this thing. I had to cut out the top section. So once I got the curve and what I did, I went back to my any rail program rejig the initial plan because obviously on the original plan this was straight so i went back to there just to sort of help me drawing out that curve cut that piece out and got it all measured and, and so on i'm not going to fill in the whole framework with a top board as i did with level one level two here is all about the escarpment and you know there, there's gradients before and after the track i'm only putting the, the infrastructure under where the track is actually going to be laid next with that you probably may not see it well here but obviously as i built this out the grade it's still on the rise it's probably very slight here it's probably under around one percent maybe under what i got planned as you would have heard in previous videos as the track heads up the escarpment along level two once it gets to the other side there will be another helix going from level two to level three but once I get to that helix, what I want to do is be at least 100 millimetre higher than the level two framework that you can see there running along the wall. Because what I'm hoping to do is actually cut out one complete tier for the helix just to cut down work. And I, I think, look, level two is about the escarpment, so it should be rising. So the next thing I did was basically put the, the supports on where the, the legs are to this viaduct. I didn't go back to the original viaduct and you know trying to get all sorts of measurements of it. I've sort of done it from my eye view on what looks right. Here the, the supports I've got in place, you know, there's gonna be a skin over these for the, the viaduct. This was just to rough in where roughly those support legs will go. And obviously these will be skinned and so on to get the shape of the, the real viaduct. One thing I did want to touch on here is on this side of the viaduct around this area, I've actually insulated level one power. Now I'm reaching level two. I've insulated that so level two will have its own DCC power bus. Before I can run trains across this viaduct, I'm going to have to put in the DCC bus for level two. It'll be running up that support beam of the shed there and then it will be split off into two power buses for level two. One will be going down the north side 
and then the other will take care of the southern side and of course they will be both protected um, with circuit breakers. <laughs> want to mention on the other side of this viaduct where we're looking at the moment where I've sort of completed or got up to with the track work over here this will actually be a portal to a tunnel for those that are familiar with the area there is a, a tunnel just after the viaduct heading towards or up north on the up line and so I will have a bit of a tunnel here the the tunnel itself I'm not going to have it too long it'll be more of a just a break in the layout and give you that indication that you've sort of passed one area and you're leading into another. And I guess this is where I'm sort of gonna to get to when I make a final decision on the train station that's on the other side of this layout on level two. So some of the things I've been purchasing lately, what you can see in front of you there is all my power connectors and that's basically how I connect the dropper wires to the main bus. These are the actual dizzy chain stuff that I put on it. As you can see here, that's how I set them up. I just yesterday had a shipment of five boxes of flex track. This should be more than enough to get me through level two. Talking further about purchases of late, I've also purchased another box of 12 point motors. I use the cobalt ones, uh, the non-digital ones. I've decided to run my layout with switch panels and not by the control cabs. Now I've been posting some pictures on Facebook of late and there's been a lot of questions on what I've been actually using to uh, weigh down my track when I glue it because I, I don't actually nail my track down. But what I use are these door hinges, the heavy duty door hinges and you know I just space them along the track and it sort of just applies enough weight just to uh, get that glue to set quite nicely. I don't use any major heavy weight when I'm putting my track work together. The, the reason for that is, you know, your, your bench work isn't always perfect. And I just find if you, you're weighing every part of that track down, I just find the, the dips in that could be a little bit too steep and you start having all sorts of issues with the, your trains running. One more item I want to talk about, which I almost forgot, when I was laying the track across this viaduct, I've actually gone back and obviously I've made a commitment to do super elevation. You can see those white plastic strips there that I've done to each of the, the left hand side of the tracks there. Now I've applied that across the curve on the viaduct and that will be applied across the layout, that technique. So I didn't actually apply super elevation between the track and the cork bed. Now the reason for this, the helix when I built this, it does have a very slight super elevation leaning to the inside of the helix. So for me there was more than enough and I just didn't want to push the point of super elevation, especially still on the helix, so it doesn't give me any operating issues down the track. So the top level here does have a slight super elevation on the curve and obviously once it reaches this point here it starts to even out.
I will continue with the infrastructure to the track work. I do plan to take it all the way around to the station. Level two, it's the escarpment. The main feature will be that station. So I'm sort of thinking I might just go with something that little bit more creative, uh, has a little bit more flair with the items around it. On top of that, I'm gonna continue building out the groundworks of the viaduct. I'm going to get that sort of in place. I'm gonna get the supports in there, sort of start to model those legs, start to use some foam to sort of build the base of the groundworks, uh, especially getting that shape and getting ready for the scenery. So until next time, bye for now. Thank you.